the ESPN Eastern Conference projections have mm. been released. And uh, they've got the Knicks in seventh place, man. 44 and 38 is their projected record for the Knicks. Seventh place. That puts us in the playing tournament along with the Hornets, the Bulls, and the Pacers. Very, very interesting, man. Um, CK, I'll, I'll go with you first, man. What do you think about, about this, these projections, and, and where do you have the Knicks uh, slotted? Um. To be real, I wasn't in as much of an uproar as everyone else. Yeah. Uh, I, I know, you know, we're excited about the change with the team. And, you know, we're definitely going to go in a, a, a high, probably we're going to go in a better direction this year, even though we had a great season last year. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I wasn't upset with it. I wasn't too upset with it because I feel like that second tier where, where, where I'm putting us in, Maybe that's premature, but I'm going to put us in that second tier. I feel like it is. Um, it's going to be such a toss up this year because I, I feel like the entire East got better. So, uh, yeah. with me, with how I'm feeling, I'm not ready to make a prediction yet, but I'm feeling more of a 46, 47 uh, range win win range. So that mm-hmm. that's what I'm looking at. But I'm not entirely as upset as everybody else at this 44. Not not, not right now. Again, it's it's way too early. Uh, I, I'm not too crazy about it, but like like I've been saying, I don't think we're gonna we're gonna be uh, in the play in this year. I think we'll have a nice safe spot yet again. I'm just not sure where that's going to be just yet because it's going to be a toss up. It, it's going to be a dog fight for sure, right? Um, yep. You know, J, JD, I said 46. You you sticking with the 50 burger? Are you are you still? JD with the 50, 50 piece, yeah. JD hit us with the 50 okay. piece nuggets while, while you were gone, CK. While okay. you were on hiatus, JD, he jumped out the window quick, fast, and in a hurry on us. Okay. He, yeah, like he it. went with the 50 burger. JD, are you sticking with it? How are you feeling right now? I'm sticking with it. He's with oh. Okay, all right, all right. But it, it, it's funny how it happened because I didn't think it would have so much, you know, it would cause, you know, so many people to actually support the prediction you know you had a bunch of phone calls we had that yeah. run of phone callers and they all were saying 50 so i think i have no choice but to stick to it now um let's you know the 44 wins i actually think it's a good thing i mean we talked about you know espn and the mainstream media and how many times we went into a season thinking we were going to be you know a certain way and then espn had us way lower mm-hmm, even last mm-hmm. door right mm-hmm. so i actually look at it as a positive that espn is projecting the knicks to win 44 games in an 82 game season like they're projecting the knicks to be a top eight seed mm-hmm. um so that's a start right so right. if 44 wins is what mainstream has us going like as the floor hey you know you're at 46 47 cp i'm at 50 i think anything over that would be a great story it should be a great story um and it would be a continuation on us having a great season last year in terms of where i believe that they were projected against everyone else above them yeah i have i have a 50 burger so i guess if you're looking at the standings that would have them at fourth seed, you know, the Heat are 49 right now. They would be the fourth seed. So if I'm going 50 51 wins, that would be, you know, contending versus the Sixers for the third seed, which is where I have, I honestly have the Knicks contending. Ooh, I don't know that they'll get there. Okay. I have okay. Them contending. And this is here, right. here's why. All right, here's let's why. go. Let's go. Here's why. Number one, when you look at who they have them against, Right. For example, let's go with the Sixers. The Sixers to me are, are a wild card for the Knicks to get there. To me, they're the wild card because if they keep Simmons, then to me, yes, they are a contender to get 50 wins. They might be that third seed because although everybody's down on Simmons, the fact of the matter is he has made it work with the Sixers mm-hmm. during the season. The playoffs and the season are two different seasons. So it does not mean that you know, they'll get to where they want to get because Simmons stays. It just mean that it just means that for the season, mm-hmm. they'll probably be another 50, 51 win team, which would be competition to the Knicks. After the Sixers, which is pending what they do with Simmons, I know everybody's on the heat. And I'm not saying that they won't be great. But when you look at that roster, you know, their best players are much older players between Jimmy Butler and Kyle Lowry. Mm-hmm. And we talk about the Knicks having questions with Kemba Walker and Derrick Rose and Mitch Robinson in terms of players that will be, you know, question marks about their health for 82 games. Guess what? The Heat have those same questions. And 
other organizations are more open to load management than the Knicks with Tom Thibodeau. Thibodeau will be playing, and I, I can't stress this enough, CP, and it's probably the biggest reason why I'm leaning towards a 50-win season. Tom Thibodeau will play every single game to win while other teams and other coaches won't be doing that. Let's be let's be real about this. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest question marks around the NBA is that sometimes teams take, they take nights off. Yeah. Sometimes organizations take nights off, right? Mm-hmm. And the Knicks won't. So the Knicks, to me, will be able to steal a few games that they maybe they're not supposed to win. They'll be able to steal some of those wins, and that will propel them to a 50-win season and just sneak over, let's say, a Miami Heat or a Sixers. It does not mean that they'll end up being a better team than them in the playoffs. I am just saying that for an 82-game season with Tom Thibodeau coaching this team, he's not playing any games. He's trying to win every game. Yeah. I think that dynamic will have the Knicks contending for a three seed. Shout out Mr. Mike in the chat says, hold your ground, J.D. It's 50. Yeah. Chico <laughs> Fernandez jumps says, I'm jumping out the window with J.D. So Team Let's J.D. Go. in the chat Let's is they are, they are riding with you, bro. So stand right. your chat. ground. Chat, hold we got nothing down. to lose, baby. Hold Two weeks down, of training bro. camp. We got nothing to lose. <laughs> And I also, I put a poll up in the chat. So everybody in the chat watching right now, first off, salute to everybody in the chat. Once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Uh, vote in tonight's poll. What do you think the Knicks uh, win total will be? Will it be less than 35, 35 to 40? Uh, what do I think I, I put? I can't even read it now. 40 to 45 or, or over 45. So vote in the chat and uh, and, and we'll read the, the winner uh, before the show's over, I, I'm with you, JD. In that, in that, Tibbs is going to be coaching and win, and and you know he's going to have these guys playing hard. Mm-hmm. I think Randall's going to still maintain his, you know, 36 minutes a night on average, like he did last year. Damn near leading the league. I think that'll continue. Um, you know, I still first first and foremost, we have to see how the chemistry plays out, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you have Kemba, you have Fournier coming in. You would hope that those guys being, you know, seasoned vets, hopefully they, they slot right in. But it's a different dynamic now. This is a point guard where uh, he's going to have the ball in his hands a lot more. We're going to be able to trust him to, to make plays better than Peyton has. Uh, maybe the ball goes, you know, maybe Kemba and, and Randall kind of split some of those duties as far as usage. We got to see how, how all that comes into fit, into play. I also have to see how the perimeter defense changes with the addition of Kemba Walker. How does the pick and roll defense change? You know, how, how does Fournier's defense hold up? I think those things have to be taken into consideration. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go with, I did say 46 wins either way. So I think, you know, 46 wins should get them around six, maybe even five. Right, they have the Hawks. ESPN has the Hawks at forty-seven and thirty-five. They got the Celtics at forty-five and thirty-seven. Knicks at forty-four mm-hmm. and thirty-eight. So they're all right there, it, you know, jumbled up together. My order, I'm gonna go with the Nets one. I'll go Bucks two. I if 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 uh, ah, so, you see how you pause? Yeah, yeah, you see because, how you pause? Exactly. Beca- That's because exactly what I'm saying. If, if, After that, you don't know. It's so yeah. many things that can happen. Yeah, tier two. If if Simmons is saying that he's not showing up to training camp, he's out of there. So I can't put the Sixers up there in third just you know because yep. just looking at the rest of the roster, I just can't do that. So I'm gonna. I'm still going to put respect on their name, but I'm going to drop them down to fifth. I'm going to put the Hawks in third, unfortunately. Yep, that's what I got too. Right? Yep. I'm going to put the mm-hmm. Hawks in third. Yep. Now, fourth. This is where it gets fun. This is where it's, <laughs> where it gets fun. Mm-hmm. I'll put the Sixers fourth. I don't know who they're going to get for them. I just don't know who they're going to get for them. We'll talk about that later, but I'll put them in fourth for right now. Fifth. I'll put the heat in there, unfortunately. I just feel like, you know, with the heat, especially especially if, if we get into those tiebreaker scenarios, that's a tough team for us, man. They they were a tough team for us last year, swept yeah. us last year. Spolster's defense is is on point. Um, I still think they need a bit more shooting, but when you factor in defensively man to man, when you talk about Lowry, the addition of Lowry, the addition of PJ Tucker. Uh, Oladipo coming back. Yes, he's a shell of himself and still injury prone, but still a, a, a plus defender. 
uh, you know, you have Bam out there, you have Jimmy Butler out there. That's a nice defensive squad. Even just even just going head up on man. Now you add in the 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 Spolster dynamics, and these guys are, are trapping the pick and roll. They're throwing zone at you. They're mm-hmm. blitzing coverages. You know, they they throw a lot of different things that really fluster the Knicks, and and it's a tough matchup for us. So, I still think that'll continue. And if it comes down to tiebreakers, I'm gonna put the Heat over us, just a smidge. But then I'm going to put us uh, in sixth. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put um, the Celtics in seventh because I think even though they lost Fournier and Kemba, I, I like what they do, what they have defensively. It's going to, you know, Marcus Smart running the point full time is, is going to be a big question mark. But adding Josh Richardson, adding Horford, yeah. you have Williams taking another step. He was a beast. That that, that 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 kid came on strong last don't year. Don't forget new new regime and coach. New don't regime, forget. Udoka. Don't you have forget. a defensive minded head coach in, right. in, in Udoka. Yeah. Uh, so and and with Tatum, I mean superstar, and and Brown taking another year, another year of maturity. Um, I'm gonna put them right there with us, man. I'm gonna put them right there with us. I'm gonna put us over them for now. Put some respect on the name. We were the fourth seed in the East. Put some respect on the name. So hmm. I'll put them over, and then eighth. I'm going with the Pacers, man. I'm going with the Pacers better than better than the Hornets. Ooh, the Hornets. Yeah, okay. I'm putting some respect on Rick Carlisle's name. Uh, right. A much better, much more competent coach than what they had. You have Lavert coming back healthy. You have Brogdon coming back healthy, which is a bonus in the lineup. Turner as well. A healthy T.J. Warren coming back. You have Duarte coming off the bench, ready to go, plug and play. I think the Pacers are going to have something to say, man. I, I think they're also going to going to bounce back from last year. So I'm going to put them eighth. That that's gonna be my, my top eight, and then, well, uh, what do you have? Nine and ten. Let's see, nine and ten. I'll put the, the I'll put the, the yeah Bulls and Hornets. I'll I'll believe yeah. Bulls and Hornets same way. Yeah. Yeah, I'll put Bulls and Hornets same way. So I'll go Nets, Bucks, Hawks third, Sixers fourth, Heat fifth, Knicks sixth, Celtics seventh, Pacers eighth. CK, how you feeling, bro? So the Knicks what six? Six, yeah. Four, yeah, eight. the six, yeah. Six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, because all he did was he swapped the Hawks up to three, and then yeah. everyone else fell down, and then we come up to six. Yeah, yeah I don't hate it. Um, I, yeah, I was looking at your top three the same way. Um, actually, you can call me a hater all you want in the chat, and I'll be perfectly fine with that. I'm still gonna give the Bucks the benefit of the doubt. I'm gonna get him the one seed. I'm, okay. I, I just something about the Nets. Like, I get it. They got all these the injuries are gonna be my concern for that team. You know, mm-hmm. I, I can't just give them the first seed. I get it. They they got a great squad put together, but the Bucks coming in with pretty much the same squad, and we know they they're really solid in the regular season. So I'm gonna give some respect on the Bucks and put them one. Nets two, real close. The same way right here. I was 58, yeah. 57. I think it's going to be the same exact thing. And then, yeah, like you, I had the Hawks at three. Um, but, yeah, and then the rest of it is just jumbled up, man. I, I, your argument's great. You know, the Heat, when it comes to like uh, to them playing us, they always have our numbers. Yeah. So, for that reason alone, it's like I have to put them above us by a win or two, and then I'm looking at the Knicks next up. So, I, I, I don't have any argument. I just think the Pacers take is the only one I'm a little – I'm looking at I'm a little bit. Mm. I, you're right with Rick Carlisle. It's just I don't I don't like their depth because I, I I just don't I love Karis Levert just don't trust him health wise not sure what to think about Sabonis health wise a lot of these guys are health concerns Malcolm yeah. Brogdon who's been who's been a health concern for the majority of his tenure with the Pacers so I I, I just want to see how they can deal with that um, I think the Hornets take a nice little step they're young so they're young, gonna be yeah. fun during the regular season um, like a lot of you guys you know even though they got my boys over there I'm not really too excited about the Bulls. So I, no. I like where you put them at. So yeah, I like the Knicks at five or six for sure. Um, y- I, I did, y'all were y'all ready for this though. I was not ready to to put <laughs> one, two, three, four because to me, like I said, it's going to be a toss up, and yeah. I feel like we can all be very wrong. There it could yeah, be a world no, no where question. the Hawks, right, where the Hawks can continue the hot ending that they had, and they can start off the season first in the East and some crazy yeah, like that. Like, yeah. There's a lot of situations that can happen, but. As of right now, I liked your uh, your 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 top. I'll say top six, and then I'll, I'll change it around at the bottom. Um, but yeah, for the most part, uh, I'm, I'm looking at the Knicks, looking at that five, four, five, six spot. That's yeah. what I'm looking at us at for right now. I mean, so, yeah, so, got you. So I, I, I just I asked the question. Yeah. All that? right. So y'all got the Knicks at the six seed and all that. All right. Yeah, all right. Yeah. But let me but let let me ask you guys this question. Yep. <laughs> if the Knicks are healthy and i'm not saying kemba 82 games healthy let's say kemba plays 
70 games. Yeah. Everyone else is healthy. Rose, about 70 games. Mm -hmm. What is the ceiling of this team in terms of wins or even seeding? Whichever way way is easier for you guys to answer. But in other words, because I think, yeah, yeah, if the Knicks are healthy, Mm -hmm. while an 82 game season, Kemba plays 70, Rose plays 70, but everyone Mm -hmm. else is healthy. Rotation is consistent. Everyone else is healthy, ready to go. Mm -hmm. Guys, don't think this is, you guys don't think that's 50? Yeah, I I do because of see see this is how I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the Nets and the Bucks in the top tier, right? They're in a class by themselves. Yeah, correct. That's not even. Yep. That's with not even with the whole uncertainty with Philly, I gotta put the Hawks, Philly, the Heat, the Knicks, and even the Celtics in that in that second tier because wow. I just don't know what what Philly what Philly's gonna be looking like once they trade uh, Simmons. Right, so even if you take Philly out of the wild, as a wild card, I still like the Hawks, the Heat, the Knicks, and even the Celtics. I, I see a lot of parity there. I see a lot of parity there. So right. with all things considered, I don't think fourth or even third is out of the realm of possibility if everybody's healthy and they gel, chemistry comes together. I don't think it, I don't think it's out of the possibility. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, if everyone's I, healthy, I, find me the window. Uh, if every if like you're saying we get 70 out of campus 70 out of rose find me that window i'm, I'm gonna be right behind you bro that, that's yeah. definitely a 50 win season no doubt in my mind but like i said to me it, I, there's just i you gotta play the variable game there's just there's just too many variables for yeah. us and for these other teams the sixers like he's mentioning with the trade we don't even know when that trade's gonna happen we don't even know if there's gonna be a point where he doesn't get traded and he doesn't play and then randomly he starts to play and then they're all out of sync. Like, we don't know what's going right. to be happening. So, I, to me, I just feel like there's just too many variables for me to jump all in on that. But I agree that the Six will be a second-tier team. But as far as us, with your scenario, your 2K scenario that you're handing us right now, <laughs> where we got uh, we get a 70-game piece out of Kemba and D-Rose, yeah, I'm. I'll, I'll, let me find that window with you, uh, JD. That that's easy fifty, easy fifty. I'll, we can talk about 52, 53, because I feel like well, that we're already well rounded and deep as it is. And if we have every all of our guys for the majority of the season, oh yeah, big big facts. I'm with you on that fifty for sure. I but mean, we'll I, I obviously, yeah. obviously, but my prediction is based on I'm going with what I believe is the ceiling. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I, you know, I get everyone. The way that you're you're basically supposed to do is you you put all the vari- variables, mm-hmm. as he mentioned, you put all the factors into play, and then you come to a determination of what you think the, the team will produce. Right. I'm just going with what I think is the ceiling. Mm-hmm. I'm going with uh, coach of the year. I'm not thinking about the playoffs because obviously, if we get influenced by the playoffs, then <laughs> Randall Randall stinks, right? Yeah. RJ RJ didn't do any. Like if we go by that, then I think my floor with the Knicks will be lower. I'm going with coach of the year and I'm basing it on the fact that when I look at the competition, I look at the Sixers, even with Simmons or without Embiid gets one injury, Mm -hmm. which Mm -hmm. I don't wish injury upon anybody. But when we talk about Uh, questions, because everybody wants to talk about the Knicks questions, guess what? Every, these other teams have questions too. And they're not made up questions. They're real legitimate questions. And Bede being healthy for an 82 game season is a real legitimate question. For sure. For sure. You know, it hasn't happened. So if that happens to that Sixers team, then what happens? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But say Kemba gets hurt. This Knicks team has depth. I mean, we're gonna be we're gonna be talking about we're over here talking about the rookies. How we're gonna find a way for the rookies to get playing time? Let alone if Kemba gets hurt, we have Rose to back up. If Mitch gets hurt, we have um, Noel to back up. We have like this Knicks team. I think is well equipped to handle different circumstances that will materialize during yeah, the season and may be best equipped to handle that than some of these top heavy teams sure. that rely so much on a Jimmy Butler, on a Joel Embiid. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's, a good point. that's also what I look at it in terms of a long stretch of an 82 game season, things happen. And I just think the Knicks will steal a few more wins and contend for the third seat. That's I think I, they're, they're, they're probably four, but contend for the third seat. And, and early returns on the chat poll, an overwhelming majority think 46-plus wins. 
for these yeah. Knicks. All right, so we got a lot of people jumping out the window right now. They are all voting, and since they're voting oh. anonymously, they, they are, are feeling very brave right now. All right, I see a couple tomatoes in the chat for me and UCK. Yeah, uh, they yeah, say yeah, yeah. We, we, They say we, don't, we, we lack in faith. But, I mean, come on, people. Look, I, I put 26 wins last year, so... I, I gave y'all 20 plus. I'm, 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 with, I'm with the people this year, man. I said 46. 